Hi, I'm Kenny Yates, and this is Nuggets of Truth. A common misinterpretation of scripture from the pulpit to the pew is found in Matthew chapter 18, verse 20. It says, For where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I among them. You will hear people say, Well, the Bible says, Where two or three are gathered in my name, that quote is correct, but the interpretation is wrong. Jesus did not mean it as an apology or for justification for a no-show prayer meeting. Jesus never meant for anyone to get up and look out over the congregation and see five or six people where there should be hundreds and say, well, Jesus said, where there are two or three gathered in my name, there am I amongst them. No, because think about it. What about the one? What about the one lonely mother who's interceding for her son, who's calling out to God for her daughter or the grandmother, who's interceding for her grandchildren, her wayward children? What about that? What about those one, the one? In the Old Testament, God said, I was looking for one person to stand in the gap someone to make an accession, just one man, and I found none. So that's not what Jesus was teaching. So to find the correct interpretation, we must read the full passage in its context. So let us read that portion of scripture now, and we'll see what Jesus is actually teaching on. Matthew chapter 18, verse 15 through 20. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I among them. Notice what Jesus is saying to his hearers. He's given them a step-by-step action plan for correcting disputes between each other, between the brethren. It has nothing to do with a poorly attended prayer meeting or a meeting in general. Jesus says, step one is to go alone to your brother and tell him what the problem is. That gives your brother a chance to either apologize and say, I was wrong, please forgive me. Or to explain his point of view. It could be that it was you who actually caused the offense in the first place. It now affords you both the opportunity to present your side of the story without blowing the whole situation out of control and thus clear the air for continued Christian fellowship. But if your brother does not receive you, then go on to step two, which is to take one or two others along with you that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If your brother still does not listen or receive you favorably, then you are instructed to take it to the next level. Step three. Step three is tell it to the church. If for whatever reason your brother still is closed on the matter of clearing the ear, then you are to activate step four. Treat him as you would a Gentile and a tax collector. Jews did not associate with either one. They kept themselves separate from them. Jesus used this expression allegorically or figuratively as something that was easy for his hearers to understand, not to separate or divide the people. That was not Jesus's intention. He was teaching the people how to act or how to treat that person who refused to clear the air, who refused to reunite 
with his brother, solve the issues that they have between them. Peter tells Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, verse 28 and 29, you yourself know how unlawful it is for a Jew to associate with or to visit anyone of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any person common or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without objection. I ask then why you sent for me. Then he gives them, the leaders, Jesus does, the authority to pass judgment or sentence of treating them like they would a Gentile or a tax collector. When he said, truly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. See, Jesus mentions this statement twice, and each one is different. This one gives authority to pronounce church discipline and pass church judgment. We will do a more in-depth study on the two in an upcoming video, so look out for that. But for now, Jesus solidifies it with, For where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I among them. He is saying the church has the authority to administer church discipline to its members. Jesus did not come up with two or three arbitrarily. He was referring back to the law. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 6. On the evidence of two witnesses or of three witnesses, the one who is to die shall be put to death. A person shall not be put to death on the evidence of one witness. Paul also uses the same kind of phrasing in his letter to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 3 through 5. For though absent in body, I am present in spirit, and as if present, I have already pronounced judgment on the one who did such a thing. When you are assembled in the name of the Lord Jesus, and my spirit is present with the power of our Lord Jesus, you are to deliver this man to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, so that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. Paul was explaining church discipline to the Corinthians. Also, let us take one more look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 through 2. This is the third time I'm coming to you. Every charge must be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. I warned those who sinned before and all the others, and I warned them now while absent, as I did when present on my second visit, that if I come again, I will not spare them. Again, it is the same principle. Where two or three are gathered in the name of Jesus, the church has the authority to extend church discipline to an offending brother or sister. Let me summarize everything I have said. I said that the verse where two or three are gathered is not a biblical excuse for a poorly attended church meeting. It is referring to the bare minimum of witnesses that is required to pass judgment or to execute church discipline on a fellow church member. The two or three minimum rule was established from the time of the law so as to ensure that true justice is being served and not someone being vindictive for vengeance sake. Paul also instructed the same rule when he instructed the Corinthians on how to deal with the sexual sins that were present in the Corinthian church. If you like this video, please hit the like button and then share it with your friends. Also, if you hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell, you will be ensured to never miss any of our posts whenever we upload a new video. If you want to grow your relationship with God and have a daily devotional sent directly to your phone or email, subscribe to our website, holdtohope.org, or join our Telegram channel, Hold to Hope. We also have a quiz channel that you can have some fun while testing your Bible knowledge skills with our Bible quiz. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm Kenny Yates and this was Nuggets of Truth. Until next time, be blessed and stay blessed.